Why is this so difficult? All I want to do is just find the perfect 5.56 rifle. I mean, I've got an unlimited budget. I can just do whatever I want. Why is, whoa, what? Oh my God, what is this? Is this just a, is this just a direct impingement AR-15 with ambidextrous controls? Is this perfection? Is this everything I've asked for? I think it is. Let's talk about the best 5.56 rifle. Welcome back everybody, Clint here today with Classic Firearms out here at Take Aim Training and Range. We've got Kaya back with us. What's up guys? And we've got a fun little video set up today all about the HKMR 5.56A1 versus the Sig Spear LT versus you put on any type of a high-end AR-15. We're gonna go with the American Defense Manufacturing UIC. This is one of our, this is unanimously loved by all of us here at the channel. We just, this is a, a rifle that just is awesome. It works really, really well. We'll go over its specs and all that type of stuff here in just a moment. But I already know which one of these, how this is gonna rank for me, but Kaya does not, right? So you've got, we've shot the Spear LT. A little bit, yeah, yep, for me. You've shot this guy. A little, little bit. bit. And you have or have not shot this? Have not. Okay, cool. So we'll be breaking the mold on that one. Yeah. So I'm gonna present all the information to you as unbiasedly as possible, okay? And I will make my mind up at the end, right? That's, that's right, all and you'll right. make your mind up at the end, okay? okay. And uh, and of course, we'll shoot it and do all that type of fun stuff, all, all of these. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and talk about the oldest one on the table, at least the gun that it's based off of, the MR556A1, based off of the HK416, which came around in the early 2000s. This is a fan favorite. First of all, it has the the words Heckler and Coke on it, so uh, there's there's that. I, I have a feeling this is expensive. Um, the most expensive on the table. So okay. where you can typically find these is anywhere between the three, two, three to four thousand dollar range. This guy. Yeah. 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 It's it's not cheap. What's so special? Okay. But what's so special is. Yeah. H oh, HK. Okay. K. There you go. Sure. All right, but here, but this is a phenomenal, very, the reputation behind this gun is is great, right? It's got a lot of military service. It's actually got the most service out of, arguably, out of both of these because you don't typically see like high-end AR-15s, right? You know what I mean? Unless yeah. you're talking like LMT. So, you know what I mean? Then all of a sudden they're out on the battlefield and they're doing all sorts of stuff in countries we don't even know that we're in right now, right? Which is pretty cool if you ask me, right? So, HK has been around for quite some time. Absolutely, uh, you know, kicking ass and taking names type of thing. 16 inch barrel, it is the, um, the Cold Hammer Forge barrel on here, accurate, all that type of stuff. Basic A2 comp right up front. You know, nothing really all that thrilling there. Free floated barrel though, and you'll notice you got a nice chonky m lock rail. Yep. Very nice, does have a solid trigger, solid feel to it. You've obviously got the great upper and lower receiver that these have. The G28 stock, which is pretty interesting as well. It's, uh, to me, I like it a lot. It's got a nice fat wow. surface area on the back here that you can see yep. bam right so there's pros and cons to that right uh but at the same time i'm letting you make up your mind yep. so i'm gonna try not to put too much opinion out there but i can't say that you know i like it it's a nice comfortable thing mm -hmm. okay All right. and uh i'll be probably i'll talk a little bit more openly after you make you it like. yeah, yeah, yeah 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 so the uh what else okay so m lock or not m lock but the moe what is it the k2 plus yeah k2 plus grip yeah. trigger is nice and solid on it feels good nice short Cool and nice reset, ambidextrous safety, and of course we've got all, all these set up with the same EOTech EXP S3 and magnifier. Okay, uh, other than that, just a well-rounded, yeah. good rifle. A little chunky boy, that's yep. for sure. Uh, short stroke piston-driven design as well, and the only ones that come with an adjustable gas system are the actual military-issued 416. So this is not mm. an adjustable gas system. So civilians. Like I said, I'm, I'm <laughs> trying to speak as unbiasedly as possible, okay. so you can assume my thoughts on that. All right. So now let's move on to something a little bit newer, the Sig okay. Spear LT. Of that course, I'm familiar with, I yes. think, a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah, well, you and I have run a couple of drills with yep. this guy. So this one we all know as the new contract gun, uh, special operations, army, stuff like that, starting to roll out these guys. Uh, fantastic rifle, right? I mean, it's obviously proven itself because it's won these contracts, or did Sig just spend a lot of money to win all these contracts? Somebody got a yacht or two, maybe. I don't know. I don't Short know. stroke piston driven design as well as the HK416 or MR556. You'll notice that we do have its own QD uh, flash hider right up here for yep. SIG suppressor system. The one that won't, that is pin and weld. This is not pin and weld. I know. 
the sarcasm that we couldn't take it off, remember? Oh, remember yeah. We trying to actually, that so this thing is rock set on there. Yep. And we did try to use some force and it was not coming off. Tried to use some heat, yeah. was not coming off. Called SIG. Uh, they said, we'll get back to you about that. And they said, actually, soak it in warm water and it'll come right off. It'll come right it. off. So let it soak for about 45 minutes to an hour or something like that. I was like, what? Really? Haven't tried it yet. Uh, so I'll get back to you on that does have an adjustable gas system with the removable rail. Uh, it's, well, when I said free floated earlier also, what I really mean by that is, you know, the rail's not coming in contact with the barrel or anything like yeah. that. It still has the piston driven design, which is making contact with the barrel, which is naturally not as accurate. Not that it really matters that much mm -hmm. for most shooters out there, but naturally is not as accurate as something like your DI run AR-15, right? Gotcha. I'll talk about that more in here in just a moment. Still a short stroke piston driven design. And the rail on this guy is actually kind of nifty as well it actually interfaces with your front takedown pin and then you actually have these two set screws remove those two set screws remove the front takedown pin rail just slides right off so if you wanted to put Pretty on a shorter cool. rail a longer rail whatever you can do that back here on the 416 or mr 556 a one really easy to remove this as well you have one nut here yep uh, and one screw you remove that and then it comes right off yep. it just clamps down on your barrel not like most other rails do on your ARs. Okay? Gotcha. Uh, you do have complete ambidextrous mm -hmm. controls on this guy. So if I wanted to send the boat home, utilizing the right side here, mm -hmm. I can. Boom. Boom. If I want to lock it, push up like that, you can. Yep. It's a little weird trying to serve the camera that. Yep. But anyway, you do have ambidextrous magazine release as well. And then you've got this uh, bolt release that, as you see here, is very easy to, to, and to use. I mean, it's just your standard whatever, you know? Yep. Excuse me, trying to actually like push down on that because I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing. Yep. Anyway ambidextrous safety also sigs grip and if we're going to compare stocks you'll notice that uh, a little bit different right oh, way got a, different a lot of that. surface area on this one and then not as much surface area here i have my opinions on both of those that again i'll let you know shortly yeah but this is also not necessary if you wanted to completely remove the stock you can you can't do that for this one or your di guns yeah unless it's a foxtrot mic because then it has its own you know, recoil assembly and you don't have to have a buffer tube, right? But it is side folding and it's very easy to actuate and that makes it nice and slim that you see right there. Hmm. Easy enough. That is pretty dope, okay. Yep. And then to deploy it, just rip that thing out and start rocking and rolling, right? Easy day, feels good, cool. Cool. Yep, uh, both all of these guns too feature a Ford Assist. Necessary. <laughs> you go. Right. Now, a couple of other things you might notice on here. Uh, you do have your QD sling swivels integrated into the actual uh, receiver on this guy. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to sling it up, you can there. As far as the rail goes, though, you'll notice you don't have one. Yeah, you'd have to have an attachment there. Yeah, you'd have to have an attachment or you're just going to go single point. Yeah. Right? Okay, cool. So for our high-end AR-15, we do have the American Defense Manufacturing uh, UIC here. This is, again, one that I said we all like here. This is what we decided to go with, all right? So it does come right out of the box with a 13.9 inch barrel. It's a little bit shorter than the 16 inch barrels. Mm -hmm. And of course, so it doesn't fall under NFA territory, yeah. territory uh, you do have a pin and weld Surefire War Comp three prong right up front, which, you know, is good for some people, bad for others, yeah. right? Because if you already have a Surefire can that you want to throw on it, great. Now you have that thrown on there, you can you can run with it, right? But if you have a different silencer, you're done. Yeah, you, yeah. you're gonna have to either request something different or you know switch out that pin and weld. And also, it is a pretty clean job that they do here. That's right there, the pin and weld job. So I've seen cleaner, I've seen yeah. worse. Just not bad though. Pretty cool. Yeah, especially with how dirty I make the war comp anyway. Yeah. All right, you'll notice in comparison to the other two rails. The rails on your AR-15s that are DI run can get a lot slimmer, right? I can literally wrap my entire, yep. you know, middle finger and thumb around this guy. Mm -hmm. It's very easy to do that. That's because you're not housing the entire, uh, a, a whole bunch of metal under here for the pistons, right? So short stroke yep. piston driven design, you're gonna have to have a little bit more room under there. So you're not yep. gonna be able to have as narrow or as slim as a rail, right? Which again, some people like yeah. thicker rails. Some people want something a little bit more slim that they can really get on and grab and run, right? So to each their own, but that is what it is. Again, it interfaces just like everything else that we've ever seen as far as a barrel nut goes, tightens down, loosens up, takes away. Cool. So we'll notice that, you know, the lightning cuts and all that stuff there are good for decreasing weight and it's also billet, okay. right? So it's gonna be a little bit, um, Pros and cons to that as well. Mm -hmm. And since I'm just being unbiased here, what I'm gonna say is it is lighter, but some people would argue that it's not as stronger, stronger as, yeah. you know, forging and things like that. Yeah. 
so to each you know to each their with their own on that one there you know so okay uh you'll notice too again cuts look really good especially whenever you insert a magazine which i can't do because youtube yeah. oh yeah <laughs> uh the trigger back here does come with a two-stage Geisley. It's one of the more basic Geisleys, but it's still a, a nice trigger, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. That feels nice and solid. A little short little reset. It's great, right? Cool. You've also got more of that ratcheting style, style, uh, style of castle nut right back here and the ambidextrous Radian Raptor charging handle. You do have a ambidextrous charging handle on the SIG. It is SIG's own, really low profile. Some people like them, some people don't. Mm -hmm. uh, to Again, to each their own there. When you have something with a little bit more material like that, if you're wearing gear, things like that, it could yeah. potentially get caught up to it, rub, rub into you, things like that. But again, to each their own. You'll also notice that we have a short throw safety on here. So it goes more at, more, not exactly 45 degrees, but it's still shorter than completely, you know, vertical. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Right? Okay, uh, you've got your standard, um, Oh, what grip is this? Magpul MOE. Yeah, just standard Magpul MOE grip on this guy. And we've got a B5 system stock right back here on the rear. And it actually, I think, comes with the B5 uh, slim stock. But me personally, you know, this is the one that I've actually yeah. switched out. I really am a, a fan of the thicker guy, uh, the Sop Mod stock. It's because I can put Skittles and stuff in there. <laughs> so there you have it. Again, just really light overview. Now, I said three to $4,000, approximately about $2,500 here. Mm -hmm. And then these guys... Here's the thing about high-end AR-15s. Yeah. They go all over the place, right? Because I think about like LWRCI that has the ambidextrous controls that I like about, which I forgot to hit on here. ADM probably has some of the most intuitive uh, probably the best ambidextrous controls on the market. They're the ones that just kind of saw that. They were the trailblazers on that, right? So if I want to lock this to the rear, you'll notice just how easy that is. Yeah. Just a, literally a flip of a switch there or just a flip of the finger and then to send it home down. Magazine release on the side here. Again, nice large surface area. So that way if I want to hit it, I can. But you'll notice it's recessed here. You have this piece of metal that's it's blocking it. Yeah. Yep. You still have a nice piece of surface area here and a larger surface area for the bolt release bolt catch so they just did a really yeah. good job with it so cool. at this point if you're not running ambidextrous controls it's not coming pretty much standard on a lot of your lowers and things like that what are you doing anyway <laughs> especially when you start getting into this price point right i'd be wild all over the place yeah. depending oh, on what you throw i on. guess i was going to say i was going to try to keep things some unbiased but there's that <laughs> that one doesn't have ambi controls all right so, hey, so price, yeah so price point like i said can go kind of go all over the place i think these are somewhere between uh the 18 to 2000 somewhere in there uh so then of course you can go way beyond that as well yeah. right now the really important factor is how does it shoot yep so let's start with the hk let's head down range and run a couple drills let's do it okay guy i want you to start off with the uh mr 556a1 why don't we just do like five rounds on each target just as quickly as you can just one two three four five switch one two three four five switch one two three four five just see how it feels for you it feels pretty heavy it's not it's not a light gun no wow all right let's go wow. this actually it's heavy but i feel like it the recoil is Got some recoil for a 5.56. Five, really? I mean, I. Okay, it's nothing crazy. Yeah. I'm comparing it to perhaps other ones that I fired, right? Sure. I, my own AR2. I feel like. You might notice that too with more piston driven guns yeah. having a little bit more felt recoil too. Yeah. You know, it'll be kind of funny to compare that to the DI gun that we're going to be shooting here in just a moment, which is naturally a lot lighter of a gun, yeah. so you should have more felt recoil, but you're going to actually have a little bit less reciprocating mass. And on top of that, it does have a shorter barrel, which plays a part, but it also has a war comp on it, which does a pretty good job at keeping that muzzle flat. So we'll see how that goes too, right? Hmm. In comparison to the Six Spear also. You got a couple rounds left, finish them off. Yeah, I'm just. Uh, yeah, I mean, okay, initial thoughts. It shoots really well. The only thing is just like maybe a tad, tad more recoil than I anticipate. Sure, okay. Let's just say that, right? Yeah. But overall, I feel like it's heavy. Yeah. And ambidextrous bolt catch, bolt release, it doesn't have one. It's a little heavy gun. I mean, it shoots just fine. It's just yeah. a little bit more recoil than I expected and heavy. Okay. But stock-wise, dope. Yeah, it's comfortable, it, right? Yeah, it's just, it stays right there. The gun doesn't move at all. Yeah. So I really like it. We'll see how that feels in comparison to the Spear LT.
Same drill, now with the Sig Spear LT. Let's focus on uh, what type of felt recoil we get and then whether or not that stock is something that you're gonna like or not. All right. Now that we're used to the G28, which has a lot more surface area to it versus something a little bit more narrow, just a little bit. Let's, let's see, find let's see out. what you think. Yeah. First things first, definitely lighter. You feel lighter gun, right? So let's okay. try it. So. So, right off the bat, yeah. first things first, lighter gun. Yeah. As for stock, I can feel that thing to be really narrow. Yeah. So, I'll go ahead and put the stock down on this one compared sure. to HK416 or yeah. 556. Okay. Recoil, it's slightly less. Yeah. Okay, so I feel felt recoil is pretty good. And I shot this thing better than the uh, MR556. It felt better. Yeah. Absolutely. So, um, you know, going to the controls, right? Obviously, you got the bolt catch, whatever. Mm -hmm. Not that I utilized it while I was shooting it, but just, just simply shooting it. The only downside over here is this tiny little bit of a stock. Yeah. I didn't like that at all. It just, I, I could feel it mm -hmm. right, right here. But the gun shooting, dude, it was, it was great. I really cannot say anything negative about it. Light, shoots really nice. If I can get something, beef this one up for me. Yeah. Dope. Well, what's cool about it is if you want to do that, you can, just like you can on the G28 stock there, since it takes a regular mil-spec mil buffer tube, you can switch that out for whatever you want, you know? Uh, but since this has just a Picatinny rail section in the back, you yep. can throw on literally whatever you want. Yep. If you whatever want it to be want. more collapsible instead of side folding, if you want it to be a, a fixed stock, you can throw on whatever you want, which is, a, which is a neat thing there. So you have the modularity there, just like you do any mil-spec stock. There's yeah. so freaking many. So you've got, modularity in that sense now the reason in my mind why they decided to go with something like this and why i actually kind of like this is because you and i are all running plate carriers all the that's time that's right you've got backpacks you've got all sorts of other gear and typically you have stuff sitting right in the pocket of the shoulder where you typically want to have your gun right yep. so now you've got a little bit more narrow area so that way you can kind of get you can kind of i guess you could say maneuver it in a situation you or can maneuver house it. it in it yeah okay. so that way you have actually a big chunky stock like the g28 or like a lot of like even the b5 sop mod which isn't big or chunky, yeah. right? You can sometimes notice like, oh, well, okay, I can't exactly find a comfortable position for this, but something like that, you can kind of maneuver in there yeah. and find a pocket or something, whatever it is, that can really slam that in there and start shooting. Definitely uh, risk versus benefits, right? Yeah. You can have the ups and downs. Right. You can have that with this, but then it's not as comfortable. Yeah. But then you can have that big beefy thing, it's probably gonna be heavier yeah. and gonna have more room. Which one do you prefer? Well, right? let's see how the War Comp and the B5 Sop Mod stock feels on the ADM. The features already mentioned, try that same drill, five on each target with the ADM, let's see what happens. Sure. Right off the bat, what I like is the slim profile handguard. Yeah. I can just wrap my hand around it, but you got the uh, bigger stock over here. Weight-wise, I'd say comparable to the 6 Pier LT, similar, almost. But let's see. All right, so go to that target. Oh. So what'd you think about that? Mm, yeah, leave, that? The mag, leave the mag in, YouTube. <laughs> uh, the reason I didn't take the mag out because obviously YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. So, I'm, uh, I don't know if I have a winner. Like, I mean, it's so close. Okay. With, guess what? The spear in that. 100%, yeah, they're so close. <laughs> what I like about this one is just, so I'm able to wrap my hand around mm -hmm. so easily. So I'm just like, like not that I yeah. can't do with spear, but right. it just feels better with this. Yeah. So I can just bam, 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 bam. It, the trigger felt better with this. Oh yeah. For sure, the yeah, guys the trigger. To, it's hard to beat a guys like trigger. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, uh, we'll finish it off out at the bench but we ultimately just kind of wanted to go ahead and get the overview of you yeah. shooting it and get that perspective. But yeah, we'll head, up, we'll head back up to the bench up top and go ahead and lay out all the guns and then give our final thoughts and opinions there. So having now shot all of them, mm -hmm. where would you rank them? Well, first of all, definitely I'll be taking the uh, HK MR556. In my opinion, I'd take this one over these two. You know why? Because HK. Nope. So I could sell this and buy two. <laughs> one of each. 
<laughs> well, that would almost get you there. <laughs> <laughs> almost. No, um, how would I rank them? Number three would be HK for yeah. sure. Like, n without a doubt, not that it's bad. It had more felt recoil for me. Yep. And it's just a heavier gun. Just a pretty bulky um, handguard, man. Yeah. A pretty bulky gun. Right so here. I've hit on, you know, kind of why you, why you need the added space, right? Of course. So yeah. one thing you'll notice too is we run more and more magazines here. The ADM, you're going to start to feel that heat a lot quicker than you're going to feel on these two guys, right? For sure. Yeah. So even actually more so, you're going to feel the heat on these two because this is still a more narrow you know more yeah. of a narrow rail than this one so you have a little bit more d separation from the barrel so you're not going to feel that heat as bad right yep. which that's you the can upside throw, yeah that's yeah. an upside you can throw on some rail covers throw on a glove call it a day quit bitching about it easy enough, yeah. right uh so there's that right but like you said as far as the ergonomics go getting your hand around this one and really driving it makes it a little bit easier no doubt like i mean hk uh, number three fantastic gun i mean i would definitely own it yeah. if i had the option but um uh, when compared to these other two, definitely number three. Okay. As for number two, which would reveal my number one pick, yeah. obviously. Okay, everybody knows a classic. I've been wanting ADM, this specific yeah. ADM, to be my rifle here at the uh, uh, unit, right? But ADM would be number two. Oh yeah, behind the Spear uh, LT. Behind the Spear LT, like okay. I sincerely, and I'm actually surprised I'm saying this, because when I came out here, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna give it a fair, yeah. Uh, you know, trial for all these, but ADM is amazing. There's mm -hmm. no way any, anything can beat it. Um, no, Spear LT felt better. Yeah, definitely. So ADM will be numbered a close yeah. second though. Mm -hmm. So Spear LT, and the reason for that is I can get the stock thing taken care of yeah. with other attachments. I like that it wasn't like rear heavy, right? Yeah. This is pretty good. The front heavy part, I mean, I'm holding it right here, so I'm good. Easily maneuverable. Recoil felt great. I like the ergonomics and all the ambidextrous features on there. And when it comes to uh, handguard, it is slim enough where I can just still wrap yeah. my hand around it. Just overall, good job, Sig. Yeah, you guys that, did well. So, yeah, personally, I think they absolutely killed it with the LT. Yeah. And if you wanted to change out the trigger, it'll accept regular AR triggers, where like in the original Virtus or just a generation before this, you know, you had to kind of like question that. You know, it's like some yes, some no. Yeah. But now they made sure that pretty much all AR triggers will fit in the Spear LT. With the rail itself, of course, we've already hit on it quite a bit, but you've actually got a lot more mounting options on this rail than you do on the ADM. Yeah. You still have a lot of options too on this one. You'll notice, I mean, with that larger surface area, you've got mounting points that are all around the clock yeah. on here, right? So all over the place, which is pretty nice. So both of these, again, phenomenal options. But the reason the Spear LT in my mind also takes it. I was going to ask your thoughts. Yeah, yeah. The complete ambidextrous controls, mm -hmm. uh, just like the ADM. But you also have the adjustable gas system. And I run my stuff suppressed all the freaking time. Granted, this comes with a pinned and weld Surefire muzzle device, which is awesome. 13.9. Love the barrel length. Really love the tapering that they have in here. And I love that they do actually go with a Surefire War Comp. It makes sense. Yep. Surefire makes phenomenal silencers, and I've got you know an RC2 of my own that I like to run. Uh, but now I'm going to be going over and shooting you know the RC2 a lot still. But I've got a couple of Huxworks also now that I'm like like the Flow 556K yep. stuff like that that I'm going to want to try out, and I want to remove it right. So even though it's almost impossible. <laughs> well, we know how now. Now, so. now that we know how, you can still remove the muzzle device on here or just get a SIG silencer, right? True. But let's be honest, I'm, I'm gonna shoot the Huxworks. So I wanna throw that on there, okay? Uh, the other things too, yeah, I really like the fact that I don't need a stock back here. Uh, if I wanna shoot this thing side folded, I can't. That's right. You know, so I have a lot more of a compact design, which for me, look, dude, I keep my rifle if I'm in my vehicle, my rifle's in my vehicle. Yeah. Put it that way. If I go to work, I'm in a, I work in an industry where it's not uncommon to see somebody walk into the yeah. office with a gun like this, yeah. right? Kitted out or whatever else. So for Part me, the job. Yeah. so for me, yeah, my rifle goes with me wherever I go, right? Uh, it's work, range, military, you know, like whatever. Work. So yeah, yeah, so everything's work in that aspect. And it's kind of like, okay, cool. You know, here's what you do. And you, you can do that for a lot of people that this might not matter as much because you're not going to be taking your, leaving your gun in a, un, yeah, your doors might be locked, but your windows aren't secure. Somebody can still break in yeah. and steal your shit. So I understand all that. But anyway, yeah, the Spear LT really works for me. However, if I'm being the most realistic, it's going to be the ADM because that's what I can almost afford. <laughs> 
I see what you're saying. So, <laughs> you see what I, I mean? mean? Okay, that is a good point. <laughs> True. I mean, yeah. it would be for me too. Probably not even that. Mm -hmm. but, I mean, uh, I got to tell you, for for the price on the ADM and all the features that you are getting, yeah. this is a very difficult gun to beat. You spend another thousand dollars or so, now you got yourself into a piston game, which yeah. is awesome. You're going to have a little bit more cleaner shooting gun. Uh, you've already got an adjustable gas system as to where this one is not, uh, you know, yeah. and if you want an adjustable gas system, you got to go either replace it yourself and spend more money on that at that end. As if it's not expensive. Pros and cons to each. So you and I are one, two, three, which 100%. I think is pretty funny. But yeah. what I want to ask you is, yeah. I was surprised. Again, when I say more recoil, I don't mean it's a hand mm -hmm. cannon or anything like that. It's just that compared to other 5.56, five, which we yeah. tried with these. What are your thoughts about the recoil on the HK? It's a little bit heavier. It right. is a little bit heavier. Uh, so I think it's, you know, it might be HK's short stroke system design, yeah. but also, you know, it's not even, it's actually not even a, a uh, it's not a, Compensator. It's not closed on the bottom, nope, right? So no you're not going to have those gases coming up, right? So it's just a flash hide. It's just a flash hide. Yep, that's it. So uh, you know, that's that's all there is to it. This, yeah, sure, is also a flash hider. But I do believe that Sig has probably got with the adjustable gas yeah. system. They might have this tune to shoot a little bit nicer. Nicer, right? You know, you've also got more modern technology taking place yep. in this uh, versus something that is proven reliable. HK416. Yep. Right. Since the early 2000s, seen a lot of combat. Marine Corps just officially adopted this. The M27. Right. Right, okay, which yeah, yeah, is yeah, outfitted yeah. for marksmen, you know, machine gunners, fire team leads, yeah. you know, all that, right? So you've got your combat proven effectiveness with the MR556. You're right. However, most of us aren't in combat. We just want a good, reliable firearm, stuff like that, right? And something like this ADM is going to is going to fit long. a lot of people's bill. Absolutely. So fantastic. Yeah. That. That being said, one, two, three. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> so there it is, guys. Let us know what you think down in the comment section below. And by the way, if you're ever local to take aim training, you see us out here, you've never shot one of these guns, don't be afraid to come up and say, hey, yeah. we, we've got the ammo, we'll, we'll let you shoot it, all right? Now our production assistant, John, we won't let him shoot anything, but you guys can, all right? Even if you're an ATF agent, you can stop by. And uh, don't forget, by the way, uh, this is actually one of our previous giveaways uh, that just ended. So yeah, we've sent a couple rounds with it. Sorry, I hope you don't mind. You're still getting a free gun. Uh, yeah. <laughs> don't forget to sign up for our current giveaway that we've teamed up with Demo Ranch on. It is the 408 shy tac M200 no scope machine intervention with the Trujicon AccuPoint and the Reptilia mount. This thing is an absolute beast. Utilize the code word DEMO at classicfirearms.com or cfcontest.com to get yourself a couple hundred extra entries. It's, it's a literal beast. That thing is nuts. And if you haven't seen Matt's video on Demo Ranch talking about it, he actually has to have a intervention. That's and, right. Yeah, have an intervention. So, uh, you know, pretty, pretty interesting stuff there. So go check that video out. Check out ours on Rumble. So that way you can, you know, see us take mags out and stuff like that, which we haven't done here as of right now. If you do side, see so any cool. cuts, it's that's I, what that's from. Thanks, yeah, YouTube. Yeah, yeah. All right, we'll, let, we'll leave it off there, guys. As always, we appreciate you and your business. God bless. And we'll see you down in the comments section below all about your favorite rifles and whether or not you think we made the right decision here or not. I know you HK fanboys are really going to be butthurt, but until they bring me an MP7, they're never going to be number one on my list. <laughs> God bless.